plus one sixth u to the sixth plus c. Oh, seven, thank you. <coughs> right, and then we just plug back in our u. Okay, so one third, since u is equal to sine x, sine to the third x, minus two fifth, sine to the fifth x, plus one seven, sine to the seventh of x, plus c. And that's your final answer. Any questions on that one? All right, so I'll let you do, we'll start on the next one. Anyone still writing? All right. Say so if you wanted to evaluate. The integral of cosine to the, let's say, which would be a good one, 48x sine of 3x with respect to x. Cosine to the power of 3x with respect to x. Okay, same approach, you're going to pick the odd exponent.
All right. So for this one, sine 3 of x, we can just make that sine squared of x times sine of x, which means we can make this 1 minus cosine squared. times sine of x. Right. What number is cosine? There, I can't read that. Oh, square. This one? No, no, or no this one. The cosine right there. Oh, 48. Oh, okay. All right. So we have the integral cosine to the power of 48x times 1 minus cosine squared of x times sine of x with respect to x. Okay. So we'll let our u equal cosine of x. Okay. Which means our du is negative sine x with respect to x. So our sine of x respect to x is equal to negative du. Alright, so we have here we have our cosine 48 of x. Remember that's our u, so we have u to the power of 48 times 1 minus u squared. And that's our negative du. And we can go ahead and just bring our negative right up front. And all of that with respect to u. And we just go ahead and distribute our u to the 48. So we have u to the 48 minus u to the 50 with respect to u. So 1 over 49, u to the 49. minus 1 over 51, u to the 51. Oh, it's back here. <coughs> Plus C. Bless you. Okay. 
And actually, if you distribute that, they'll kind of swap places. So we have 1 over 51, u to the 51. Oh, 50, I'm sorry, I don't know why I said 40. No one saw that and said anything. Because I was looking at that. Oh, it was 50. I need a nap. <laughs> I've been here since 7 and it's starting to wear on me. 51. There we go. And that was minus u to the 49. Plus c. Then we just plug back in your U. So you have 1 over 51, U to the 51, so that's cosine 51 of X, minus 1 over 49, cosine of 49 of X, plus C. And that's your final answer. Any questions? All right, so now we're going to do one where you just have an even exponent for sine and cosine. wanted to evaluate the integral of cosine squared of x, bless you, with respect to x. Okay, so you can't make this one 1 minus sine squared of x because you now have a squared sine you have to deal with, so that one wouldn't work. Okay, so whenever you have just an even exponent for sine or cosine, Remember, cosine squared of x is equal to 1 plus cosine of 2x divided by 2. Or you can just make it 1 half plus cosine or 1 half cosine of 2x. So now, instead of integrating cosine squared of x, we can integrate 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2x with respect to x. Okay, so we have our, now you can probably integrate them both at the same time. So you have the integral of 1 half, which is just 1 half of x, plus, fract out the 1 half here, the integral, I'll do that kind of on the side, for the integral of cosine of 2x, respect to x, let u equal 2x. So that means your du is equal to 2 dx. So your dx is 1 half du. Do you have a question? Sure. Oh, oh, yeah. No problem. Yeah, you know your 1 half plus 1 half plus sine 2x? Mm -hmm. You can just pull out a 1 half and just say 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2x, and then you can just pull out the 1 half out of the Oh, yeah, if you want to do that, you could, yeah. If you want to just factor the one-half out to the front and then add it at the very end, you can. All right, so where am I? 
All right, so that gives us, we need a little more room to work that one out. That gives us the integral, cosine of u du over 2, bring the 1 half right out here. So it's just 1 half sine of u d, well, sine of u plus c, so you might as well make that sine of 2x. And you can save the plus c for the last step if you want to, you don't have to add it there. Okay. So that's one half sine of two x plus c. Which just gives you one half x plus one fourth sine of two x plus c. Alright, so whenever you have just that even exponent you'd want to go ahead and replace that. You only use the other method if at least one of them comes out to be, to have an odd exponent. All right, so any questions on this one? Okay, so it works this way with, oh, yes. Could you use u substitution for this or no? You couldn't only because if your u is cosine of x, your du would have to have a sine x. So you wouldn't have a sine x there. All right, any other questions on this one? All right, so this is pretty straightforward when it's just squared, but the higher the exponent, the more steps you have. So we're going to do sine to the fourth power. Oh, cosine to the fourth power, sorry about that. Sine to the fourth is the same thing. Okay, so let's say if we wanted to evaluate the integral of cosine to the fourth with respect to x. Okay, so remember that cosine of squared x is our 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2, or you can make it 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2x. Okay, so that means our cosine of 4x, or cosine 4 of x, that's going to equal cosine squared of x, squared, which means our cosine squared of x gets to replace, gets to be replaced by one half plus one half cosine of two x squared. Okay, so if we decide to write that out and foil it, we have one fourth plus one half cosine of 2x, I mean, yep, once I have cosine of 2x, that's your outer and inner, which is 2 over 4, 2, two over 4, let me make sure I get that right before I write it down. One fourth cosine of 2x? Yep, so that's 1 4, 1 half, yep, 1 4. Nope. Make sure. Yep, still one half. Yep, that's right. Yeah, because it'd be a quarter cosine 2x. Yeah. Quarter cosine 2x. Yeah. All right, plus one fourth cosine squared of 2x. Okay. Which worked out, but the only problem is we now still have cosine squared. So now we have to plug it back in again. <laughs> Okay, so you have one fourth plus one half cosine 
2x plus 1 fourth, 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2 times 2x. Remember, if this is cosine of 2x, that x right here became 2x. So if you add it, multiply what's in here by 2 again, you end up with 4x. So if you did that again, you end up with 6x, and it'll just keep multiplying by 2. Yeah, exactly. It just keeps on going. All right, so we know our cosine to the power of 4 is equal to 1 fourth plus 1 half cosine of 2x plus, if we go ahead and distribute that, we get 1 eighth plus 1 eighth cosine of 4x. Okay. And if we combine those two, we get 2 eighths over 1 eighths, 3 eighths. So you get 3 eighths plus 1 half cosine of 2x plus 1 eighth cosine of 4x. Uh -oh. okay. So after all of that, we have a somewhat simpler, I don't know if you can call it simpler, but a somewhat more manageable integral. Okay, so that means you have the integral cosine 4 of x with respect to x becomes the integral 3 8 plus 1 half cosine 2x plus 1 eighth cosine 4x with respect to x. Okay, so now we can just integrate each term. Okay, so the integral of 3 eighths is just 3 eighths x. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. Plus 1 half times the integral of cosine 2x is 1 half sine of 2x. Plus one eighth, the integral of cosine four x is one fourth sine of four x plus c. All right, so that's going to equal three eighths x plus one fourth sine of two x. plus 1 over 32 sine of 4x plus c as your final answer. So if you see one like sine to the eighth of x, start crying. Just start bawling. Just, you... <laughs> just, start, just start bawling right there on the spot because you're going to be sitting there for a minute. So... There's no shortcut to that. Not like this. If it were... I mean, I guess if you can if you remember, like, if you can remember what cosine to the 4x is... Actually, they like, do have, like, a formula. Out, you yeah. can just remember but that formula's not even worth remembering. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's small. Yes. Yeah. 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 So if you can remember that, what if you then you just have to keep going to after that. Divide by the... You can set that up half that work. Oh, you mean for this one? Yeah. Like oh, or for any of them, really? Yeah. Yep, you're going to. So, like, if that was. Yeah. Because it would be all of that squared. Would you just, in general, divide by the derivative of that? Mmm. Start crying. Yeah. It would be all that squared. Well, with oh, you mean how I went from there and just automatically knew to one half yeah. would be there. With that one, kind of the easiest way to remember that 
is, let's say if you had the derivative of cosine, let's say 2a. I'll pick a different number. Let's say... Oh, you mean if you had x squared in there? Right. Oh, if you had x squared in there, then you'd... No, nope, it would still be... If you were integrating, right. you talking about if you were integrating? Yes. Oh, okay. So if you were integrating and that was a 2x, I mean x squared, that would be over 1 over 2x. Well, I'll, I'll work it out. I think it was 1 over 2x for that right. one. So multiplying by the reciprocal of the derivative of the inside. Of yeah, the exactly. Okay. Yeah, because if we were... I know, I, was, I had to kind of work through what I got what you were yeah. saying. <laughs> All right, so with this one, you remember that if u equals 8x and du equals 8 dx. So if you have cosine of derivative of cosine of u, that would be negative sine of 8x times 8, or u prime. So that would be negative 8 sine of 8x. Now that's where differentiating. So if you're integrating, you're actually just going to be dividing by that same number. So that's why I'm able to just kind of hop like from one to the other. So, wrong one. So let's see if you integrate cosine of 8x dx. Okay, so that's going to be u equals 8x, du equals 8 dx, which means your dx is equal to du over 8. So the integral of cosine of u du is just going to be over 8. Yep, oh, over 8, thank you. Sine of u I guess you could say 1a sine of u plus c, or 1a sine of 8x plus c. So you kind of do a couple hundred of them, you see the pattern. All right. So when you're differentiating, you just multiply it by the derivative of what's in there. If you're integrating, you just divide it by the derivative of what's in there. This way you don't have to go through that. Let u equals this and u equals that and pretty much know the shortcut. All right. So any questions on that one? All right. And I believe that is it for today. I'll end it there. <laughs>